Hey guys, so today's video is finally going to be my perfume collection video. I'm going to be walking you through every single perfume I own, so I already know this video is like 100 years long. I apologize in advance, but I'm really going to try my best to breeze through every single one. I'm going to briefly describe it and then move on because seriously, I don't want this video to be an hour long. And when I did my Zodiac perfume video, which if you haven't seen, I'll link it down below. That video was super long and that wasn't even all of my perfumes. I have a lot more. So I'm going to try not to talk too much. I'm gonna try. And of course, to make it simple for you guys, I am gonna have all the notes on the screen for every single perfume because God knows I'm awful at explaining crap anyway. So. Also, yes, I am trying out the new INH Selena bangs. These are clip-on bangs and I honestly just threw them on today. I had this ugly, messy bun on. It's like crooked and everything. And I was like, how can I make this better? And I threw on the bangs and I like them, okay? I like them. If you don't, keep your comments to yourself. I know everyone has very strong opinion on bangs, but I love clip-on bangs. They're so fun. It's a cool way to change up your look, and I like them, okay? Check out INH. But anyway, guys, let's get into this video. But before I go down the list of all the perfumes I have, I did want to show you my setup because I know I'm going to have a few questions like, where do you store all of those perfumes? <laughs> and honestly, the best place to store your perfumes are in a cool, dry place. So whatever that looks like for you, whether it's like in a box under your bed or even in the fridge. I know a lot of people like to store their perfumes in the fridge. I have way too many to put them in my fridge, but I know people like that. <laughs> and the absolute worst place to store your perfume is like in your bathroom near a window because number one, sunlight kills your perfume. If you really want to see a perfume go bad, leave it in your backyard by mistake for a week and then come back and take a look at it. That happened to me not too long ago and it destroyed my perfume. I had to throw it away. So make sure you're storing your perfumes in a cool, dry place. The bathroom gets way too humid with the shower going on. So that's obviously not ideal. I personally keep mine in my bathroom, <laughs> but the bathroom I have here in my beauty room because I take zero showers in this bathroom. I actually use my bathtub as a storage. I have a bunch of shelves in there. It is unusable. So I keep my perfumes underneath my sink. I barely even use that sink, honestly. So it's a nice, cool, dark, dry place. And that's pretty much where my perfumes have been living as of recently, like the past few months. And I will show you a clip of it, of course, but I keep them all on this little acrylic perfume holder, which I got this off of Amazon and I just find it so easy to store your perfumes because it obviously turns and you can see every single one. And it's just so compact. I love it. I have two of them sitting right next to each other. And I also keep a few other perfumes in my bedroom, like ones that don't necessarily fit on that acrylic thing or ones I have as decoration because I really, really love the bottle. Like my Byredo perfumes, I keep them all on top of my sink because I just love looking at all of them on my little wooden tray. But anyway, for the most part, they live on this little acrylic organizer thing. So, all right, now that I've talked for 25 minutes, we can finally get into this video. And honestly, I'm just gonna jump right in. I'm not gonna go in any specific order. I'm just gonna like work my way down the tray. And so yeah, grab your coffee mug, grab a snack, grab some popcorn, something, because you're gonna be here a long time. Okay, so I keep smaller bottles like this on the top of my little acrylic shelf, of course, because they have those little tiny compartments. And normally I wouldn't count little sizes like this, but I thought I'd throw it in there just in case you're wondering about these specific scents. And we're gonna talk about all of it, okay? I have a few of these replica perfumes, but I don't have any in like a full, full size. I have these two little guys, and then I have a few travel sprays, which I'll get into when I show you my travel spray collection. <sighs> Oh my god, this video is gonna be so long. But this is Beach Walk and Lazy Sunday Morning. There's just something about Lazy Sunday Morning that gives me really cozy, romantic vibes. I don't know if it's the rose in this or like the musk, but something about it is so beautiful and it's a very, very elegant scent. It kind of doesn't remind me of a lazy Sunday morning. If anything, it's like a romantic walk through the park. And then Beach Walk is pretty much your typical beach scent. It is a little bit nicer than like Estee Lauder Goddess. I don't know why that was the first one I thought of. Or Bobbi Brown Beach, which I feel like those are way too strong and way too sunscreeny. This is like a perfect mix and a balance while still being very elegant and beautiful. Like it's not too beachy. It has a nice mix of like the beach and fancy florals, you know? It's definitely not my favorite beach scent, but it is a good one. It's one of the better ones for sure. Next up we have Jo Malone Mimosa and Cardamom. And I really love Jo Malone scents because the ingredients are very simple and you can mix a bunch of different fragrances 
pieces together and it doesn't become overwhelming and powerful. This one is very, very beautiful for the spring and summertime. What I like about this one is that it does get sexier like the longer it's on your skin. It does dry down really beautiful. It's like an elegant fragrance, but it has like that tonka in there that gives it that like sexy twist. I really love this one, but my favorite, favorite Jo Malone scent of all time is Blackberry and Bay, which is why I have this big hunk. This perfume is truly incredible. This one is very masculine. I can also see men liking this perfume as well. Like it definitely smells very unisex to me. It is extremely sexy. And I just feel like this is for the bad bitch. It has bad bitch energy. It's such a beautiful scent. And honestly, the longer it's on your skin, the nicer it is. That's why I really like Jo Malone scents because I feel like they wear nicer throughout the day. They may not last a really long time, but I like how their scents like adapt to your skin. If I even worded that correctly, you know what I mean. When it mixes with your body chemistry, Jo Malone does beautiful things. And I've mentioned other Jo Malone perfumes in past like collection videos, but I've since then finish those and these are the only two I currently own. Okay, so next up we have this brand, Kayali. I, I have no idea how to say this brand and I believe this brand is owned by Huda Beauty or it's like one of their sister companies. But this one is Vanilla 28 and honestly, it's the only perfume that I like from this brand. I've tried every single one of their perfumes. And while some of them are nice, none of them were nice enough for me to buy, except this one. I really, really love this one. And I gotta be honest, I don't really love a lot of vanilla perfumes. Some perfumes that are strictly vanilla kind of smell terrible in my opinion, but this one smells really beautiful. It's like the perfect mix of sweet and elegance. It's not too much, it doesn't give you a headache like a lot of vanilla perfumes do. And it just adds that little bit of sexiness that really makes you fall in love with it. It's not just vanilla. It has a little bit more, but it's still really, really sweet. If you love vanilla perfumes, like you love that really intoxicating sweet scent, you will really like Vanilla 28. Okay, another vanilla perfume that I have that I recently purchased, and I've completely fallen in love with this perfume for so many reasons. This is so good. This is from the brand the seven virtues and it's vanilla woods and this one is extra special because this has a rose quartz gemstone roller so when you're actually like rolling this on your skin you're rolling rose quartz onto your skin which i freaking love that because i love rose quartz and this scent is beautiful this is another vanilla that's not too vanilla in fact this one is a little bit muskier than the last vanilla scent the other one was very sweet and intoxicating this one is a little bit more laid back it's not a vanilla that really punches you in the face and it has a little bit of that amberness to it that really shines through and it and it's not too sweet. I really love the combination of these notes together like the caramel and the pear. It's a very very woody vanilla which I mean I understand the name. Makes sense. Okay, so Giorgio Armani C has been a cult favorite for years. This perfume is so stunning and it will truly always be in my collection. Oh my god, it's so, it gives me, it literally gives me goosebumps. It gives me all the tingles and all the feels. It's one of the prettiest, most elegant, sexy, beautiful perfumes I've ever had. And I'm sure I've told you guys the story like 800 times, but in case you don't know, I actually bought this perfume because of Danny. I had sprayed it on myself in Sephora one day. And as he was following me around the store, he kept telling me like, wow, you, you smell amazing. You smell really, really good. And that's always a good compliment from your person. So I was like, say no more. I'm going to buy that and use it all the time. And it really is so good. It just reminds me of date night, sexy time. Good old sexy time. Another sexy time. This is Gucci Guilty, and it's another one that has a cult following for sure. This one is a little bit different. This one still says sexy and powerful, but it's a little bit sweeter, a little bit more feminine than C. Like while C is a scorpion woman, Guilty is an Aries, you know? It's sensual, it's powerful. She has secrets. She is a heartbreaker through and through, but like has a heart of mush at the same time. It's such a stunning perfume and it really makes a statement. It lasts a super, super long time on the skin and definitely a favorite for sure. So Le Labo Rose 31 is pretty much the only rose perfume I like. And honestly, I don't really wear this all that much because I'm not a huge rose fan, but I love using this perfume like mixed in with other perfumes because it is such a simple rose scent. So sometimes I like to mix it in with other really sweet perfumes, but I specifically like this one because it's not too overpowering. Some rose scents really, really give me a headache. This one is very simple and not too strong yet lasts a really, really long time on the skin. It's very feminine and elegant, but it's not like it doesn't give you a headache. So I love this one. This perfume, I never know how to pronounce Limperatrice. I don't know. That was terrible. This perfume is like watermelon in a bottle. It's very, very watery and like light and fresh. It reminds me so much of springtime and like fresh blooming flowers and 
fresh rain. It's very lovely, like that's the only way I can describe it is just like soft and lovely. I also really love this bottle. The only thing I don't love about this perfume is that it doesn't last too long, but it is a soft scent to begin with. So if you get really bad headaches from perfumes, like if perfumes in general are too strong for you, you might really like this one. It's like very girly and sweet. She's definitely a Libra for sure. Next up we have Clean Skin. I spoke about this perfume in my Zodiac video, I believe. I said it was perfect for you cancers out there. This perfume is so unique. I really don't have anything in my collection that smells quite like this. And it has a very funny name because I swear to you that it does kind of smell. It doesn't smell like skin, but it smells like a perfume after it's been on your skin for a while and it like warms up and gets nice and cozy. That's what this smells like. It smells like a very cozy, yummy, like I want to hug you and cuddle you kind of scent. It's like warm and inviting and just reminds me of like yumminess. I don't know. I also really love these clean bottles. They're so cute. Victoria's Secret Heavenly Angels is one of those perfumes that just takes you way, way back. It's been around for like decades, I feel. It is the epitome of elegance. I always tell people this is like the perfect bridal scent because it's not too strong, not too soft, but yet it lasts a really long time on the skin. And it just smells like happiness and bliss. It also reminds me of like mothers. It's a very motherly scent. It's also one of those perfumes that I really love how it smells. Um, the longer it's on my skin like as it warms up to my body I have loved a lot of Victoria's Secret perfumes in the past like very sexy But yet none of them match up to Heavenly Angel. It's like literally the best perfume they've ever done Do you guys remember me talking about Cerruti 1881? Love this perfume so much um, Cerruti actually means like curly hair I believe and I love that this is a perfume I discovered in middle school actually Which is so crazy. Oh my god. I swear your young days are like the best years of your life, huh? It sucks to be an adult. That just took me to the movies with my friends and the boys I had the crush on. I don't know how I discovered this scent. I don't remember how it came into my life. And it's actually a pretty mature scent for like a freaking eighth grader, but it's so good and I find it to be so unique. If there's ever a person wearing this perfume, which is very rare, I always know exactly what it is. And I really like that not a lot of people know about this perfume because it, it gives you that like unique scent. You know, there was a point in our lives where every single person was wearing Viva La Juicy and even though Viva La Juicy is like literally one of the best smelling perfumes I've ever smelled, I love it. I just don't like to wear it anymore because it's like, oh, it's Viva La Juicy. This scent is unique and so, so powerful. It is definitely one of my most long wearing perfumes of all time. It's tied for like first place when it comes to wear and longevity. This thing will last on your skin for hours and hours and hours. You definitely smell it like the next day, way into the nighttime. It is really, really strong, which is why I only suggest like two spritz of this. And I know I keep saying this about all the perfumes I'm talking about, but this perfume, especially the longer it's on your skin, the more incredible it smells. Cerruti is so good. My ride or die for life. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly talk about the three perfumes that I have in my bedroom that are under my sink. This one doesn't fit on my acrylic thing. This is Rihanna's Rebel Fleur. I spoke about this in my Zodiac video as well. This perfume is also so unique. I don't have anything in my collection that smells quite like this, which is why I love it so much because I typically don't like celebrity made perfumes, except the JLo ones and the Ariana Grande ones. They're actually pretty good. But all the other ones I've tried have kind of disappointed me. This one is awesome because it doesn't smell like every other celebrity perfume. Usually they're all like vanilla-y and sweet, this one has such a sexy twist to it. It really like does kind of remind me of Rihanna. I feel like this is definitely something that she would like to smell like. It's powerful, but it's also like very sweet and feminine. I love this scent so much. And for a celebrity perfume, it does last a good time on the skin. And then this perfume, I've gone through like 10 bottles of this already because this is actually what I wear every night to go to bed. And I know you're thinking like, that's a bit much. like. Invest in a body splash, girl. But I love it. I love it so much to sleep. And trust me, I make sure to only do one spritz of this. And honestly, I always do it like on my shirt, all the way at the bottom of the shirt so that my covers can cover my shirt so that the scent is not too strong. And I know, I know. That seems, that seems weird, but I just love the way I smell in the morning that it's worth it every single time. It's like while I'm tossing and turning in the middle of the night, I get this yummy whiff of MAC Candy Yum Yum. Oh, did I even mention that's what this was? MAC Candy Yum Yum. I smell that sweet yumminess throughout the night and in the morning it's just like so warm and cozy. I freaking love this scent so much. 
It's definitely my favorite MAC scent of all time. I love it more than Turquatic and it lasts forever. It's just, it's so good. And then this one I keep in my closet because I love it so much and it means so much to me. And this one was actually a gift from my friend Diana, Dissy Nails on Instagram, she's the best. Because this perfume is actually discontinued because Gucci loves to do that to me. They love discontinuing their best fragrances. They love it. This is Gucci by Gucci, the female version. I know they have one for men and I love, guys, if you has a boyfriend or you has a husband or I, I don't know, a coworker you are in love with, get them Gucci by Gucci. For men, Oh my god, it smells so good. And the female version is just as sexy. It's so intoxicating and inviting. It has that like strong patchouli scent, which I freaking love patchouli in my perfumes. Super long wearing, like wow, such a good scent, but you know, it ruined everything, so. There's that. All right, so let's talk about my Byredo perfumes. I have four of them. These are definitely my priciest perfumes ever, with the exception of one that I'll, that I'll show you later. But Byredo is a very, very luxury, that's expensive ass brand. And honestly, I always think twice before I invest in a Byredo scent, which is why these four are my absolute favorites. If I had to recommend scents from Byredo, these four would be the ones I would say you need to try. The first one being their most famous one for sure. This is Gypsy Water. And this is a very fresh and aquatic perfume. Like it instantly reminds me of like waterfalls and nature. I could also see this kind of being like a unisex fragrance as well. It's very, very simple, but still so, so beautiful. And then I think Bibliotheque is definitely my favorite Byredo scent of all time. I spoke about this in my Zodiac video as well. It just, oh my God, it reminds me of a love story. It truly does. And not just any old boring love story, you know, like a full on forbidden love story, like so Super forbidden. I love this scent so much. I'm so glad I'm writing the notes for you because what even is this video? But honestly, what originally drew me to this perfume was the name. I just find it so romantic and beautiful and I'm so happy that I absolutely love the way it smells. Slow Dance is kind of similar to Bibliotheque. Well, no, it's not similar. It's way more rich and definitely more intense. It kind of reminds me of like powdery sweet tarts almost. I know that sounds weird, but it's very intense, very rich. If you don't like intense scents, you won't like slow dance. But the longer it's on your skin, it does kind of die down a little bit. Like when you initially apply this, you're like, oh, that's that's a, that's a bit much for me. But the longer it wears, it just becomes so, so beautiful. And it's such a pretty name as well. I love Byredo for their stupid names, my gosh really know how to get me. And then my last Byredo fragrance is Sundays. This one is so good. It honestly reminds me of a day on the boardwalk. It has a little bit of like vanilla cotton candy, like sunshine-ness to it, but it also has like a salty, airy vibe. Like it's a sweet scent, but it's not too sweet. It's just, it honestly reminds me of sunshine. It has the perfect freaking name. It's kind of like the scent I picture when you've been in and out of the pool all day and you've been laying in the sun. Some idiot kid! just rang my doorbell and started hauling ass down the street. I'm like watching it on the cameras and he took off. Like he rang that doorbell and took off. <laughs> ah, neighborhood kid shit. Back to this, sun dazed, really beautiful. Okay, so next up we have Flower Bomb and honestly, I haven't used this perfume in such a long time. It's clearly time to throw this away because Flower Bomb is not supposed to be this color. I've had this perfume for years now. You could tell it's, it's it's time to move on. <laughs> this is another one of those perfumes that I feel like so many people have worn it for so long and it's been loved so much that it, I hate to say it, but it's a little bit, not overrated because it's not, it's incredible. It has amazing lasting power and it's such a beautiful scent, but I, a lot of people wear it. So it's become like very common, I would say not, Overrated, very common. And it's such a specific scent that you can definitely like pick it out in a crowd. Whenever somebody's wearing this, you just, you just know. It's really intense. It has a little bit of that powderiness to it. Very, very sweet, but not like sickly sweet. It's more of a sexy sweet and it lasts forever. It's really good. Versace Bright Crystal is another really amazing perfume that lasts an incredible amount of time on the skin. I really enjoy a lot of Versace perfumes and this one is definitely my second favorite. I prefer their Bright Crystal Noir over this one. It smells completely different. This one is a little bit more for like the daytime. Actually, I, I don't even wanna say that because it's 
such a beautiful nighttime scent as well. It's a really beautiful perfume to take you throughout the day. Like it's perfect for the daytime, but it's also really, really nice for the nighttime. It's very feminine, but it's also very like warm and inviting. Like when I think of somebody wearing this, I just picture them really nice and friendly and easy to talk to, you know? Burberry Brit is actually a perfume I wore a lot in high school and I recently picked it up again just to feel that nostalgia and it's just, <laughs> I love perfumes and how it really does just trigger a memory. I definitely wore this perfume when I had like a certain boyfriend in high school and it's honestly taking me back to high school I actually am picturing a very specific moment in my high school parking lot like underneath the building and like my high school boyfriend had laid out like a little picnic it was so cute. I'm literally remembering that as I smell this. Okay. It is a very sweet scent, but I like that it's not too much. It's not too overpowering. It's a very soft sweet, a very fruity sweet. It's one of those perfumes that I really do think it's perfect for someone in high school because it really isn't too strong at all. It's not the kind of perfume that you have to let it settle. Like immediately when you spray it, you see how like fresh and light it is. And I feel like Air Signs would like it. I don't know. Perfect by Marc Jacobs is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. It has a very sophisticated scent. It has the perfect amount of sweetness, it has the perfect amount of floral, of fruity, and it has really incredible lasting power. And the longer it's on your skin, the more beautiful it smells. Every time I wear this perfume, somebody asks me what I'm wearing and that is just, that's always a good thing. I love that one so much. Just like this guy. Okay, so this is actually the most I've ever spent on a perfume and this is actually the second time I purchased this. Originally when I first bought this, I'm like, okay, I bought it because I wanted to see what all the hype was about, but I am never gonna buy it again. And then every time I wore it, I got 101 compliments and I was like, damn it. I have to repurchase it because it's just so good. It's so inviting and intoxicating. This perfume is called um, Baccarat Rouge 540 from Mason Francis Kirk de Jean Paris. This is another perfume that has a cult following. People love this. It's special for a reason, guys. I'm not even gonna lie. It has kind of like an oiliness to it, which really, really helps the staying power. This stays on my skin for days. It is crazy. Out of all my perfumes, I feel like this is the hardest perfume to describe. It's sweet, but also kind of woody. I don't know how to describe it, but it's truly so elegant, so beautiful, and this will stay on you for hours and hours. Even if you feel like you don't smell it anymore, people around you are smelling this on you. In my opinion, it might be worth the money. But anyway, on to something a little bit more affordable. This is Ariana Grande's perfume and I'm pretty sure this one is called Sweet Like Candy. I have a couple of her fragrances, but all of them are in like a travel size. This is the only perfume of hers that I have in full size and honestly, it's not even my favorite one. I think my favorite is definitely Cloud. This one is a little bit too basic for me. Like it, it does smell like a bunch of other celebrity perfumes, but it's literally a dupe for Escada Moon Sparkle, which was one of my favorite perfumes perfumes of all time, but that got discontinued. It's very sweet, like very, very sweet, very candy-like, but it does also last a pretty good time on the skin, which is pretty impressive for a celebrity perfume, so I do really like it. Next up, we have Beyond Romance, and this perfume is very unique. It's very powdery and really intense. I feel like if you get headaches easily, you will not like the scent. This is the kind of perfume that I personally only like to spray like one or two spritz and then I'm good because it is very sweet. Like, very, 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 very sweet. If you're not into sweet scents, you will not like this, but I truly love sweet scents. And this one has like a powderiness to it that just makes it so yummy. Like you just wanna eat the person that's wearing this. It's very, very delicious, but I can only wear it on specific occasions, like when I'm feeling in the mood, you know? Okay, next up we have Chloe Nomad. I believe that's how you say this. Nomad, Nomad, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is actually the only Chloe perfume I like. You know the original Chloe perfume, like the very popular one? I actually don't like that scent. It doesn't really smell that nice on me personally. This one is definitely more my speed. It's so, so elegant. This is what I picture CEOs all over the world wearing. It's just very beautiful. It's also very nurturing for me. It kind of reminds me of Mother's as well, like a very motherly fragrance. This would actually be a really nice perfume to get your mom on Mother's Day because it it just feels so like warm and elegant and and perfect for that. I don't know, really, really good perfume. Also has pretty good lasting power. Okay, so another cult classic. This is a favorite amongst many of us. Coco Mademoiselle from Chanel is my favorite Chanel perfume of all time. It's very, very elegant. I know I've used that word to describe a lot of these scents, but this is the epitome of elegance, even down to the bottle. This is like the most beautiful, like 
thin, fragile, perfect, gorgeous bottle. Not only does it feel expensive, but this really smells expensive. It's very florally, but in a very, very fresh way. It doesn't give you a headache or anything. It's almost like a very watery floral, like flowers in the rain. It's so fresh and beautiful, just absolutely stunning. One of the prettiest scents of all time. Talking about prettiest scents of all time, my favorite perfume to ever exist in the history of the world is Gucci 2. And guess what? That's right, discontinued. It has like black currant in there, I believe, which I love black currant in my perfumes. It's sweet, but it's almost like a spicy sweet. Like this girl means business, okay? She is a hot, bad mama jamma, all right? Gucci too, because you need it. Oh, but never mind, you can't get it. <laughs> It's gone. Okay, this perfume. This perfume is really, really good. The only thing is that it doesn't last a super long time on the skin, which is the only thing that sucks. This is Sunset Riot from All Saints. This perfume is literally a combination of Baccarat Rouge 540 and Hollister. It is so crazy to me because I the reason I bought this was because everyone kept saying it was a dupe for Baccarat Rouge Which it actually is a little bit. It smells very similar to it Especially when you first smell it. You're like, oh, I can I can see it I can see it but it has that strong undertone of Abercrombie and Fitch This is a very sexy fresh scent that just makes you like Ah, that's so good. It's really good. So Daisy Love from Marc Jacobs is a very 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 fun springtime fresh easygoing perfume it is kind of like a romantic lovey scent i picture a lot of girls like in college or in high school really liking this scent because it's very soft and feminine it's not too overpowering it's not too much it's like the perfect balance and i really really love this packaging it's so pretty like on your vanity and yeah it's really nice it's not my favorite marc jacobs scent but i love how fresh and feminine it is and speaking of fresh and feminine Oh my gosh, I love Bella Rosa from Oscar de la Renta. It smells like what I picture the most popular girl in school wearing. You know, it's like really intense and florally rose, but it's not like grandma rose. It's very, very sweet rose. This is like, okay, this is the perfect scent for you. If you love rose, and sweet because it truly is the perfect combination. It's like the girliest rose scent ever. I freaking love it. And it just leaves behind like this like powdery, musky yumminess. It's very intoxicating. I really, really love this scent. So pretty. So next up is actually a perfume that I got not too long ago. It's from uh, Jimmy Choo. I love Jimmy Choo scents. One of my favorite perfumes of all time is from Jimmy Choo. So I wanted to pick this one up. I forget the, what is this called? The name isn't on here, but it looks like this. It is very, very cute and very, very yummy. I've gotten a lot of compliments since purchasing this off of Ulta, and I really like the spray. Like, you think this is the cap, but it's not. It's the spray, and it smells, ah, I got that in my eye. It smells so yummy. There's something about it that's kind of like soapy to me. It, it it reminds me of like a fresh shower. Like it's kind of like sudsy and bubbly and clean, like very clean, but still like florally. <laughs> that's like the weirdest way to describe it. I don't know, it reminds me of like a fresh shower. Like don't get me wrong, it doesn't smell like fresh laundry or linen or anything like that. It's still like florally and pretty intense, but it has like that watery soapiness to it that I can't even explain, but yeah. Love that. Okay, sorry for the brief interruption, but I had to finish filming this video on a completely different day. I was sitting here for hours, my butt started to get numb, and then my camera died. And still to this day, I only have one battery, still, one battery. All my YouTuber friends tell me to invest in another battery, but <laughs> I like living my life on the edge. So it is the next day, I have painted my nails, I have blow dried my hair, and I have covered my pimple with a fake beauty mark and I'm ready to dive right back into this thing. Okay, so, so far I've only shown you all the perfumes on one acrylic organizer. We are now going to jump into the other acrylic organizer, which actually has my more colorful kind of perfumes. Not that that matters, but anyway, let's jump back into this. I've spoken about my beloved Miami Glow perfume by JLo for many, many years. It is my favorite sunshine, summertime scent. It really hurts my soul that this was limited edition and you can no longer get it. I mean, you can still get it on Amazon, that's where I get it. But it sucks it's not super available to the public because it is the most unique, fresh, aquatic, coconutty, beachy scent ever. It is absolutely beautiful. It's like the perfect scent to wear when you're wet. I know that sounds weird, but it's my favorite scent to wear in the beach, like actually in the water, like in the pool. There's just something about it that smells so good when you're submerged in water. I can't explain it, but it's how I feel. It is so incredible and it lasts 
forever on the skin, which is so rare for a celebrity perfume. Hands down, the best celebrity perfume I've ever smelled. I don't know where that, I don't know why I did it with that accent. My beloved, Pink Sugar. This one, it, this one is hella expired already. The thing with Aqualina's Pink Sugar perfume is that it does go bad pretty fast. It doesn't last as long as other perfumes in my collection and I think it's because it's such a sweet perfume. It's so incredibly sugary that I think it just doesn't have the lifespan that other perfumes have. But it's still a really good perfume. Even though I feel like I've outgrown Pink Sugar a little bit, I still wear it all the time. I still think it's a plus. It smells like pure, pure cotton candy, like true cotton candy, sugar. And the best part is, it's that it's super affordable. It's one of my most affordable perfumes and it lasts a very, very long time on the skin. I've actually gotten more compliments from guys when I wear this perfume than any other perfume in my collection. Why do boys love sweet scents so much? Like without fail, a guy tells me I smell good every time I wear this. Oh, not anymore. I mean... I don't go anywhere. Okay, so next up we have another very, very sweet perfume, but this is a sexy grown-up version for sure. This is Dolce & Gabbana's Pour Femme perfume, but this is the intense version. I actually love the intense version way more than the original. This one is very sweet, but um, also like a powdery sweet. It's not super, super sugary. I know it has um, marshmallow notes in it, which I can totally smell for sure. It kind of gives it that fluffiness to it. It's not too heavy. Even this intense version, it's like kind of fluffy and warm. It's a very rich and inviting perfume and I honestly love it after a few hours on the skin. It's another one of those perfumes that smells better the longer it's on your skin. It's not the craziest most long wearing perfume I have. I'm not gonna lie like it's not in my top five in terms of wear but it does smell really nice and it smells beautiful on your clothes. Like for some reason every time I wear this perfume and I go smell my clothes the next day I'm like in heaven. It is so good as it wears. <sighs> Yummy. Something that's not so yummy. In fact, a perfume that I only keep because it was the most expensive perfume I've ever purchased in my life. I think this was even more than Baccarat Rouge 540. This is Tom Ford's Lost Cherry, and I swear they were trolling us with the name of this perfume. I'm telling you, the Tom Ford team was like, <laughs> you know how this perfume has absolutely no staying power? You know how you can like barely smell it on your skin after 20 minutes? And you know how it's like cherry? It's like mainly cherry. Okay. What if we named it Lost Cherry? Get it? Because like the cherry scent is lost after five minutes. Honestly, the disappointment I feel every time I spray this perfume is like, I can't explain it. It's pure disappointment. I personally don't get the hype around Tom Ford fragrances. I think that they are overpriced. Like look, I get it. Baccarat Rouge. I understand why you cost what you cost. Like I, I get it. This. I don't get it. It smells really good in the bottle, don't get me wrong, and the packaging is really lovely, super beautiful. I love the scent of cherries. I know it's not for everyone, but I really, really love it. It smells great. But the fact that I don't smell it, not even after an hour, is just completely unacceptable for me. And I'm gonna continue to spray it on my body and have it disappear until it runs out, and then I will never purchase it again. But moving on, this is Marc Jacobs' Daisy, um, the twinkle one. I love this. This is one of my favorite Daisy perfumes ever. It is lavender in a bottle. It smells like my childhood, like a grown-up version of my childhood. Because you Hispanics out there know that we love Agua de Violeta. Like, that is our favorite scent as babies. Our parents love to smoke mother us in that Violeta Cologne and this is definitely like a grown-up version of it. It's very very fresh, very subtle. It's the perfect springtime perfume. It's not gonna give you a headache. It's a very soft perfume which I really really love and I love this packaging. All right, let's talk about my alt fragrances. So I'm not gonna go on and on and on about this brand because I did in my Zodiac video which I'll link down below if you haven't seen it. But basically alt fragrances is a brand I discovered from my friend Amanda when she was at my house doing my hair. I was like, oh are you wearing Baccarat Rouge? And she was like, nope but I'm I'm wearing the dupe and I was like what dupe is that because it smelled identical to Baccarat which is freaking $300 and then she showed me the website and it was alt fragrances and that specific perfume is called crystal number 23 which their entire brand is pretty much duping really high-end like luxury perfumes so crystal number 23 is a dupe for Baccarat Rouge and honestly it freaking smells identical but of course the staying power is not the same it doesn't last nearly as long but it's still a really 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 great dupe especially if you've been wanting to try that perfume forever but you're not a crazy person so you won't spend that money 
morning. I understand. This is a great, 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 great dupe to try. Honestly, like the best dupe for that perfume out of all the ones that claim to be dupes. This is the dupe. And then Alt Simply Santal is a dupe for Le Labo's Santal 33, which is a very, very famous perfume. I used to have it, and it turns out I don't like this scent. This smells really beautiful on so many people. Like, it smells so good, but it doesn't smell good on me. And Simply Santal smells identical to the Le Labo perfume. So if you've been wanting that one, but again, it's too pricey for you, I would definitely check out the Alt Fragrances Simply Santal, because it really is Simply Santal. It smells so good. But for some reason on me, it smells like a goat. And then these two were recent purchases from the Alt fragrance website but this is peach smash number 20 which is supposed to be a dupe for tom ford's peach perfume i think it's called bitter peach or something and honestly i don't know if it's an exact dupe because i've never smelled the tom ford one but considering these are spot on this one probably is as well and i really really wanted to buy the tom ford peach perfume because i love the smell of peaches but after that lost cherry debacle i was like no 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 not happening again so i'm really glad i got to try some sort of dupe it smells really really fresh and really yummy and literally identical to peaches and then this one is crystal smash number 35 which actually is a combination of peach smash and crystal number 23 so it's like the tom ford peach and the baccarat rouge perfume came together and had Crystal Smash number 35. So strange, yet so yummy. I don't know. This alt fragrance brand is kind of cool and very interesting, so. And affordable, super affordable. I don't know why I keep my black opium hair fragrance on my little acrylic organizer, because I keep all of my hair fragrances. I know, I have a separate drawer for hair fragrances, but I keep them in my bathtub. But since I ran out of my black opium, I guess I just threw my hair fragrance in there, because honestly it smells very, very similar. The only difference is the Hair perfumes don't have like that high amount of alcohol because that's pretty drying for your hair. So it doesn't last a super long time, but Black Opium is one of those classic perfumes as well. Why it sells Black Opium, I don't know if I said that. It honestly smells like a badass bitch. That is the only way I can describe this. It's very, very sweet, but in a very powerful, sexy way. It's not like sweet, sweet, like, oh my God, I No, it's like rock star sweet. You want to lick my body. <laughs> Sweet. It has notes of coffee in there, which you can totally smell. It has like that intensity to it. It's honestly one of my favorite perfumes ever in terms of scent, but it doesn't last a super long time on my skin personally. I know so many people who swear by this and say that it lasts forever on them. But yeah, Black Opium is a great, great perfume. Jimmy Choo by Jimmy Choo. I forgot the name of it for a second, but it's just Jimmy Choo. This perfume is the best Jimmy Choo fragrance to ever exist. I've smelled all of them. I really, really love Jimmy Choo perfumes, but this one is like no other, guys. This is the most intoxicating, oh my gosh, like most incredible fragrance ever. It's definitely like in my top five, I want to say. Top five, and I have a lot of them. This is like a sex bomb. I don't know, like it just reminds me of like a sex bomb. <laughs> Not only does it smell really, really rich and sweet, but like also sexy sweet, it's very, very sexy, but it also lasts a super, super, super long time on the skin. Every single time I wear this, I smell it the next day. I get loads of compliments every time I wear it. It's just one of those perfumes that you can honestly smell like on the other, other side of the room. It has an incredible throw, like it's just, it's powerful. Okay, so this one is not nearly as powerful. This is actually a very soft fragrance that doesn't last that long on the skin but I love it this is the brand Lacoste you can see the little alligator or crocodile I don't know and this perfume is called Pour L I believe and it is so incredibly yummy it reminds me a lot of Aqualina's pink sugar but it's a little bit more fresh that one is a little bit heavier like more intense um, it lasts longer this one is a little bit more like daytime fresh it has an airiness to it like it's very sweet but bubbly not like sugary it's like bubbly sweet I don't know how to explain it it has like a soapiness to it that's so so nice so fresh I love spraying this like all over my body because I, I feel like you never have too much on since it is such a like fresh soft scent but I love the scent so much that I, I will continue to purchase it because it's the perfect perfume to just throw in your purse and reapply throughout the day. Nest Indigo is definitely my favorite fragrance from Nest. It is so 
incredibly unique. I love a lot of Ness fragrances, don't get me wrong, but Indigo is the one that I constantly go back to. It's so unique. I don't have anything in my collection like this, and I truly love the Ness packaging. It's just so different. I love it. This perfume is very alien-like. Like, it's kind of weird. It has almost like an earthy element to it. It's like a fresh, florally, earthy but not too earthy kind of scent. It's very beautiful. I get a lot of compliments every time I'm wearing it and it's usually from people telling me like, oh my God, I've never really smelled anything like that. That's such a unique scent, which of course is always a nice compliment. So I really, really love Indigo. Okay, so this scent I'm actually really, really excited about because it was a recent purchase of mine and I'm super excited to wear it this summer. It's the perfect summer fragrance. This is from a brand called Ellis Brooklyn and this perfume is called Salt. This was actually a recommendation from one of you guys in my Zodiac perfume video, I had a comment that was like, oh my gosh, Kathleen, you absolutely need to try salt. I feel like you would love it. And so I ran to Ulta and I picked it up and I do, I do really, really love it. It's one of those perfumes that definitely falls into that category like Replica Beach Walk, Bobbi Brown Beach, you know, one of those scents. But this one is really, really nice because it has like that musky undertone. It's not like too sunscreeny. It has like the perfect amount of like that salty smell, but it has like that amber and that sandalwood in here that smells so incredible. Like I really smell that sandalwood. Oh, it's so, so good. I cannot wait to wear it in my backyard this summer. Okay, now this perfume is a must have. This is definitely one of my top five favorite perfumes ever. Um, it definitely was a more recent discovery for me, but it is beautiful. This is Versace Crystal Noir and it smells so damn good. It actually reminds me a lot of Le Labo Santal 33, which I don't like. This is like a sexy, sweet version of it. And what's so impressive about this perfume is the staying power. I don't wanna drag on about this perfume because I know I've, I've, I've been talking about it a lot recently, but it lasts forever on the skin. Days and days and days, it is just one of the most long wearing perfumes I have. And it smells so good the longer it's on your skin, it's just, so good. Glossier You Perfume is definitely another one of my favorites. I feel like she is such an underrated gal. This is such a beautiful scent and it's perfect for every day. In my opinion, it's the perfect perfume for the entire year. Like it's just so classic smelling that I feel like it, it fits any season. I mentioned this in my Zodiac video, but it just reminds me of a fresh shower. It's very simple and sweet, but also very, very elegant. And it's another one that lasts a very, very long time on the skin. One time my friend was leaving my house and I hugged her goodbye and she said that she she could not stop smelling this on her clothes for like the rest of the night and she even had her own perfume on and she could still smell this. It's pretty incredible when it comes to the staying power. It lasts a long time on the skin. Ah. Uh. Classic Gucci Rush. This is the cult classic red door perfume that has been around since I think like 1995. Ah yes, 1999. I just went to go check when Gucci launched this perfume and it was in 1999 under the art direction of Tom Ford when he was in charge at Gucci. Wow, I didn't know that. Tom, you've lost your touch with perfumes, let me tell you. This is actually a perfume I added to my collection about a year ago. Not so much because I really, really loved the fragrance, but because it does give me like nostalgic feelings and you guys know I love that. This perfume actually reminds me of my grandmother. She used to wear this back in the day. It just reminds me of like a grown-ups, you know? Like when, you, when you're a kid and you're like smelling all of your mom's fragrances, it just reminds me of like adults. It's a very, very strong, sophisticated, very sexy perfume but not like too sexy, not like promiscuous sexy, like a boss ass sexy. It's definitely a more mature scent. It is pretty strong, but it doesn't smell like old lady-ish or anything like that. It's for a strong fire sign, I'll tell you that much. Something on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. This is Eau de Juice. Actually, the, I think the brand is called 100% Chilled. Actually, I'm not exactly sure, but I got this off of Ulta. And honestly, I bought it just for the packaging alone because while it smells really, really, really good, it smells so sweet. Like, it reminds me of sweet tarts. It smells like pure candy. Not even sugar. It's very candy-like. I probably won't repurchase this after I finish it up because it just does not last on the skin, but it's still a very, very, very yummy scent. So, Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue is the perfect summer fragrance. I personally prefer the 
the intense version. I love this brand when it comes to fragrances, especially since Dolce & Gabbana makes my number one perfume of all time, which is coming up next, which I'm sure you know what it is. But most of their perfumes last a pretty good time on the skin. This one in light blue is so classic. It smells like the ocean to me. Like the kind of fragrance that I would never wear in the dead of winter. Like that's how summery it is. It's so beautiful and I love this intense version. It just lasts longer on the skin. All right, so Dolce & Gabbana, the only one. This is my number one perfume my favorite perfume if we are not counting Gucci too because you can't get that one anymore. This one is definitely in second place. I am completely out of this perfume. I need to buy another one. I have like three sprays left. This is the most sexiest, sweetest, yummiest, most intoxicating, most inviting. All the things I've said of all the other perfumes just wrapped into one, the best fragrance of all time. And the best part is that it lasts forever on the skin. I can appreciate a perfume even if it doesn't last a super long Long time because I'll just throw it in my purse. I'll reapply whatever if I really love the scent. But this perfume is super special because not only does it smell incredible, but it lasts an incredible amount of time, which is literally all you can ask for in a perfume. Hands down, the best. I get wicked compliments when I wear this. Every single time I wear this. Okay, so I purchased this Alien perfume based off of the packaging alone. I thought this was the most beautiful bottle I had ever seen. And while I do think it smells really, really nice, for some reason on me, it doesn't smell the best. It ends up giving me a headache, believe it or not. There's something about it that's a little bit too heavy for me. I don't know what note it is specifically, but I sure do love this bottle. I don't know what it is about it that I just wanna stare at it all day. It's like the colors in it are so gorgeous. And when it catches the light, it looks so beautiful on my vanity. And don't get me wrong, I will definitely wear it, but I will wear it very sparingly and I won't spray too much because it is a little bit much for me, but I can see why so many people like it. It is a very warm and cozy scent. So yeah, good stuff. Uh, speaking of a warm and cozy, oh my gosh, the um, Victor and Roth Bomb Bomb Bon perfume is super, super amazing. I am almost completely out of mine and mine has already turned like this weird yellow color. I need to buy another one. This perfume is a sweet intoxication for sure. It reminds me of like chocolates and caramel. There's like so much sugariness in this perfume, but it's like a very sexy adult grown-up version of it. This is like the kind of perfume that you buy if you've been an Aqualina pink sugar addict your entire life. Like it all throughout high school and in college and you're like, you know what? I want to take it up a notch. I want something that's pink sugary but for a grown-up. This is definitely the perfume for you. It lasts a very, very long time on the skin. It is pricey, of course, it's Victor and Roth, but it's such a beautiful fragrance and it's so warm, like so warm and caramelly, so good. Oh my gosh, guys, we are on our last perfume before I take you over to my little acrylic organizer and show you my travel sprays and all of that stuff. Versace Eros Pour Femme is one of my favorite Versace perfumes ever. This is fruit in a bottle. Like this is such a fruity perfume. Whenever I wanna smell like very sweet and fruity, I always go for this. It just reminds me of spring and summer. Very fresh, but very sweet in like a fruity way. I just love how it smells. It's very, very girly and very, very inviting. I just, I love it so much. And I do love this bottle, so pretty. But okay guys, now let's talk travel sprays. Okay, so really quick before I go, I'm gonna show you my little travel sprays. So I just put them in this little lip gloss organizer I got on Amazon. It's just an acrylic lip gloss holder. And I usually keep travel size perfumes to all of my favorite full size perfumes, but I don't keep them here. I keep them in my drawer in my bedroom. Here I have perfumes that I don't have in full size. So I have my Skylar perfumes here in the front. I'm obsessed with this brand. They have the yummiest perfumes. The only thing I don't love is that they aren't super, super, super long wearing. So having them in a travel size is perfect because you can just throw it in your bag and reapply throughout the day. But my favorite is definitely Vanilla Sky. I think they're all really, really good though. Sun Shower, Isle, Willow, oh my God, so good. Salt Air, so good. Oh my God, this one is delicious. I also have Nest Sunkissed Hibiscus in here. An Oliva Perfume, Lipstick Fever. This is Lancome La Vie Belle. I can never say that perfume, but this perfume smells amazing. I used to have it in full size, I just haven't gotten it again. We've got Valentina, one of the Donnas. Um, I forget which one that is. Viva La Juicy, a old classic. I've got some Killian perfumes and the reason I don't have these in full size is because this brand is 
freaking expensive like yeah that's expensive like super expensive <laughs> but this one in princess is my favorite it is so so good and i actually don't love the full size bottle it's a little bit bulky for me so i'm going to continue to buy the travel size i love their princess perfume we've got a classic deep euphoria calvin klein we've got some ariana grande perfumes oh crap my cloud ariana grande perfume is currently in my purse and then i have a few replica perfumes as well that I don't have in full size because these are also very, very pricey perfumes. I've got Bubble Bath, Jazz Club, Coffee Break, and Sailing Day. And out of all of the replica perfumes I've ever tried, Sailing Day is the best. And yeah, that's my little travel perfume organizer that I keep under my sink as well. Okay guys, so now that you've been here for a total of three hours, this video has come to an end. If you are still here, oh my gosh, hi. I love you so freaking much. I appreciate you so much. Please subscribe to my channel and like this video, please. But we finally went through every single one of my perfumes. I know it's a huge freaking collection, but I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget, I will link my organizers down below, my travel spray one and my other one. And yeah, guys, that completes this video. I love you guys so, so, so much. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. We're almost done. Wow. Whoops. Um, I dropped my cat. Like it's not too BG. BG. No. Some of them are just some, some strictly vanilla. What is up with me today? I just lost a button. It smells like, oh, it's, it smells like, <laughs>